Article 237 of the 1998 Land Act stipulates that all land in Uganda shall vest in the citizens of Uganda and shall be owned in accordance with the following land tenure systems customary, freehold, milo, and leasehold. However, land ownership has recently become a continuous issue in Uganda as the government has proposed a new law to reform this article. Holders of the undeveloped large pieces of land may have to sell out their land to government for the development of the country. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. Locally, eucalyptus timber is more expensive than pine. But the pine is usually exported. If you have a, a, vast, a, a vast of land, you can, you, you can engage into uh, eucalyptus, so long as the soil is fertile. From Kakwese Parish, Masindi District, Musei Joseph Sabiti is a retired public servant who has since turned farmer. He owns 400 acres of land, out of which 200 acres have been developed with farming enterprises and the rest has been left redundant. His is a story of a customary landowner who was advised by a government official to find better ways of managing such a big piece of land. This way, he could avoid the effects of the new proposed law to reform the Land Act. He talks to us about how he has been able to successfully manage farming on a large piece of land. People encroached on my land with some cattle and uh, it was very difficult to get them out until I went to RDC. Then uh, he, he made sure that these people were moved but then at the same time, he asked me to occupy the land. At least make sure that there is some activity going on. And uh, the best thing was to put in trees in a, if we, to make a forest. So I started with 16 acres of, of, of pine, extended it with 22 acres, until I found that the management was becoming a problem. It required a lot of money. So I, I had to engage into production of other crops like bananas, coffee, so that I get income to sustain the, the pine. And this continued until I have made 100 acres of pine around there. With 100 acres dedicated to tree planting, Musei Sabiti still has 300 acres of land at his disposal. How then has he moved to develop it all? So the crops which I, I engaged in were coffee, uh, bananas, and I, I got some livestock, and annual crops like maize, uh, watermelon, tomatoes, those which can give me quick money so that I'm able to maintain the, the pine and also cater for my other, my other needs. This nursery bed uh, is for production of coffee seedlings, which I usually supply to what is the creation? Operation wealth creation to give it to farmers uh, so they, they plant in, the, in their gardens. It is a policy of the government. That young that land there, I'm, I'm preparing for uh, planting uh, watermelon. It's 11 acres. My whole land is 400 acres. But part of it is a rock, and uh, it cannot uh, sustain any growth of, of, of crops. There is only grass, which can be used for cow, 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 cow grazing, cattle grazing, and uh, the remaining is really useless. It's only about 200 acres which are in production. 
Management of such large pieces of land on an individual basis might not be so easy. It is therefore advisable that the landowner ventures into commercial activities on large scale rather than farm for home consumption. Commercial projects to undertake on such vast pieces of land could involve commercial tree planting, coffee farming, animal husbandry, banana farming and other projects that will help the landowner benefit commercially on a large scale. I went into coffee and, and uh, bananas just to earn me money. As I told you, to sustain the management of crops and myself. I give, give away my requirements. Uh, as for now, you can see the dry season. This place would be occupied by uh, other crops like cabbages, tomatoes, and watermelon. So, it's very difficult to have those crops now. Coffee is four acres and it is now in production. It has got bedding. Banana, bananas are eight acres. Yeah. To fully utilize the massive piece of land, Musei Sabiti had a sizable number of crossbreed dairy cows. He collects about 60 liters of milk per day, although management of exotic breeds is not a walk in the pack. He says these are a must-have for any farmer that intends to commercially benefit from dairy farming. They are dairy, they are dairy cows, have frisians. They are crossbreed, and um, they gave me milk. I think, although I needed to improve on their feeding, which I am now engaging myself into. I have uh, a plantation of uh, elephant grass, Napier grass. We call it Napier grass. Mm -hmm. I intend to put these cows under zero grazing and feed them, feed them here, water is here, you can even cut them. Those are three drums, very soon it will get finished. And uh, you need to clean it this around, around the homestead, wash things, uh, spray them. Yeah, it's not easy going, you have to give it a try and uh, make sure that uh, you Get knowledge from veterinary staff. You, you visit them, they visit you, they advise you on how best you can keep the, these, uh, these animals. In fact, when I was coming here in 2007, you know, I brought the cows in 2010, eh? in 2010. I had only three cows used uh, artificial insemination. But you have got to adhere to what the veterinary staff tell you to do. You have to spray against the ticks as, as often as they recommend you, because <laughs> it changes. When it is rainy season, the ticks are more rampant than dry season. So you can spray twice a week. Hmm? Then you deworm. They have parasites, internal parasites, the worms. You do worm every after three months. Uh, you, there is what they call a chipumpuri, trypanosomiasis. The trypanosomiasis can also be controlled. There is a chemical you have to, to supply, to, to, to use every, every three months. There, then they will not. Yeah, the animals will survive. Just as it may not be easy deciding the right projects to put on this land, it is equally hard to manage them. There is then need for research knowledge and a reliable labor force. Normally, farmers learn better from their fellow farmers. 
Well, the more you visit farmers who you think are doing better than you, the more you improve on your knowledge about crops. So I have been moving around, uh, visiting Mujuni. He explains to me how watermelon is planted and so on and so forth. So is maize, bananas, even workers, some workers come with, with the knowledge of uh, managing a particular crop, like bananas, yeah. You get somebody from uh, Bushenyi, Ankole, uh, you are sure he's going to, to manage your bananas very well, of oh, Buganda. In addition, there are more challenges to look out for as a large-scale farmer. It is therefore advisable to plan for them in advance. Uh, in farming, uh, there are so many challenges. One is the unstable prices. You have your crop. Uh, you have your crop and you selling it is a problem. They come with little money. You find that you are even operating at a, at a loss. Then the, this, this uh, change in the climate. It has really affected us. Like I have told you, bananas dry because of the long spell of drought. Formerly they are used not to be such a thing. Another challenge we have is um, about labor. Labor is a big challenge. I have imported, even got some farmers from, I mean laborers from Rwanda. We have them here. Because people here don't don't want to work. You look, you have got your work. When you want to engage somebody, either he does he feels he shouldn't work for you, or he's contented with his idleness. But most of them are idle. It's really surprising. So those are the major ones, really. If prices could be looked into. Labor, labor can be overcome using uh, mechanization. Mechanization simplifies things. If I had, say, a tract of my, my mine, I would have dug this area and finished. But now we are relying on hand labor. Even milking is using hand. So labor is, is hitting us hard. Besides hiring labor and applying heavy mechanization, managing farm on large pieces of land needs many other inputs if the farmer is to successfully benefit. Maintaining soil fertility, pests and diseases control are other major factors to consider. Besides labor, I have to put in in terms of, of manure. To maintain a, 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 a banana crop and coffee crop, you need to continuously add in manure. Yeah, pesticides you can't do without. You can't do without pesticides. With, uh, bananas have got banana weevils. They have nematodes, which you have to control using chemicals. I have to put them in. But uh, more, more so, you can do it best. You can control those pests and the diseases, keeping your farm clean. It, 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 the cleanliness does not allow banana weevils to survive or multiply in the banana plantation. Mm, because, of course, the weevils like where there is dirt, there is uh, uh, water, there is everything. So if you cut off the, 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 the dirt, you have managed the weevils. If a disease comes like banana bacterial root, you observe the control measures of cutting when cutting down when 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 you see you identify one with the uh, symptoms, you bury and do everything possible. You are fighting the disease. We do slashing. Slash. You have to slash so that it, the, the place looks clear. Mm? If you, remove, you leave it in the bush, there is a competition for 
as a light word, whatever it is. And then at different stages of growth, you 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 do pruning. Pruning, you remove the lower the lower branches so that uh, it, you, you you allow it to grow faster. It grows high faster. You are removing parasites. We you know when the, the the branches are many, they become some of the slower ones become parasites. They don't participate in the manufacture of food. They are just there feeding. That's the pruning. Then at uh, another stage, especially at um, nine, eight, eight, nine years of age, you have to do thinning. You allow plants enough space to grow bigger. Plant trees? The trees. The trees to grow bigger. If you remove the neighboring one, it enjoys it enjoys more and grows bigger very fast. When fully utilized, farmers that maximize the potential on their large areas of land will find it easier to find the market and negotiate price on their terms. This is because they produce different agricultural varieties in large quantities. Having both pine and eucalyptus trees on his land, Musei Sabiti explains the market situation for these two species and why he thinks it's advisable to invest in them. They are both for timber production and they can provide wood lot, that is the firewood for, for people. And, uh, they keep the they conserve the environment. That's why I chose them. But they are not very different. Only that uh, pine takes longer in the field before it is harvested. Fifteen years you can harvest. Whereas eucalyptus has got different use at different growth stages. For example, after one and a half or two years, people building might want these small, small, small poles, poles. And uh, at the same time as you do thinning, you can get those ones to sell to those building. Then at another stage, you get poles, and those which will remain, will, you will you utilize them for, for timber and firewood. So uh, apparently eucalyptus has got more, more use than pine. But I think locally, eucalyptus timber is more expensive than pine. But the pine is usually exported. So you can see they have two different markets. If you have eucalyptus, you can get better market. From his own experience as a vast land owner, Musei Sabiti strongly advises that a farmer with a large area of land should be able to fully utilize it by engaging in different commercial activities. I think I would advise them according to my journey. If you have a vast, a vast of land, you can either choose from No, I think you can you, you can engage into uh, eucalyptus so long as the soil is fertile. But of course, you cannot uh, have only one crop. You can try others, and for those who have got cattle, they can do it along with the you plant a forest as 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 well as you are looking for. I mean, you are looking after your cattle. There's nothing wrong. Mm. And uh, some other crops will come in. For example, what is important is uh, a farmer to sustain farming. He must be having what to sell all the time. That's why you should engage into different crops so that at one time you are in, you, you, you are you, you have something to sell 
and that one also helps to for example if you have cows and the crops they they support each other they do support each other you get cow dung use it in in bananas coffee and the crop does very well okay, what you're doing yeah That's manure ready to, to go into crops, either bananas or... There is another heap there, there is another heap there, there is another heap here. Yeah. As Ugandans anticipate the effects of the proposed law on reforming the 1998 Land Act, landowners need to think fast on how best to transform their vast areas of land into large-scale commercial agriculture for development.